Paul Eihander with you. The voice you just heard was Graham Hill on the ones and the twos. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Chopped it up about the Panthers. Chopped it up about the Hurricanes. A little bit of Olympic action for you here now. Today is the five ring circus. As we start all the medal rounds and all the eliminations today, Germany eliminated Greece this morning in men's basketball. It'll be Team USA hoops tonight. I guess it's sort of in prime time. It's kind of the last thing that'll happen because all the preliminary games were not played in Paris, and now they've all they brought back the final eight teams in the in the medal rounds, so to speak, back to Paris for these championship rounds. So there'll be, I'm sure, more pictures of celebrities in attendance. USA favored by 26 and a half over Brazil. USA is yet to cover, by the way, in any of their first three games leading to the medal rounds. Not sure that they're going to cover again. Brazil, though, a very upstart basketball team. They are the, uh, they're kind of, if there's a, if there's a pseudo underdog story, it's probably the Brazilian team. They're like one of the best, or they're one of the hottest shooting teams right now in all the Olympics, from what I was reading about in the preview. Yeah, they don't miss. They don't miss by any means. They've they've had plenty of opportunities to move forward. So Canada's playing this morning, too, uh, probably as we speak, I believe. That one might be underway. But Team USA, 26.5-point favorites. This is the, this is the five-ring circus part of uh, the Olympic Games. Also today, women's soccer. Women's soccer has been dealing with fatigue issues so far. They had to go full extra time in their clincher to get to the medal round where Trinity Rodman did the – the bend it with her left leg, but five or six players, I believe, had to have treatment because of cramps and whatnot going late. The encouraging part is during practice, we'll call it practice, it's training, you know, during training, during practice before today's game against Germany, they're running it back with Germany again, apparently everybody was relatively fit. And so a lot of the injuries that they had, a lot of the fatigue issues, this is what it is in the Olympic Games because you play so many games in a short period of time unlike during the professional schedules, where in some case, maybe you're only playing once every week because I, of how long that schedule is. I could be wrong on the timing, but if my memory serves me correctly, their, their match that kickstarted this rent they're having right now in the Olympics was that 4-1 win against Germany. Yes, so they're running it back against Germany here again. The women's team favored, though. Not much, though. It's uh, minus 115 on the money line for the women. But it's also uh, Spain in the second game as well, and Spain is favored, and I can't remember who Spain's playing. It might also be Brazil, <laughs> Brazil on the women's side as well. And I, I made a mistake yesterday, and those of you who are listening yesterday, uh, you know, Paul makes mistakes, I do. Uh, apparently skateboarding isn't over. There is still women's skateboarding today. The finals are this afternoon, so there will be women's skateboarding. But it is the five-ring circus that is the Olympic Games. So much that the gymnasts say they should have had more of a circus when they were going through their individual events. So Simone Biles following the big monster run that she had, 11 medals overall, second most decorated gymnast in Olympic history. Uh, Simone Biles talked about the experience that she had at the Games and certainly a lot more confidence that she had and felt a lot better as opposed to her experience in Tokyo. You smiled a lot yeah. this week. Like, there's pressure. This is the Olympic Games. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's pressure. In watching you, the other games, mm -hmm. it felt like your smile was showing a different joy yeah. in these games. Why? Because I'm a lot happier and I chose to do this. So at the end of the day, whatever happens, happens. But I'm in a good spot mentally and physically. So you can't take that away from me. So whenever I'm out there, it's just like pure joy. Can't believe I'm out there again competing, representing my country, just having fun, doing what I love. NBC Olympics with uh, Mike Tirico there and Simone Biles. She had more joy, right? Except during the balance beam portion of things. If you might recall, over the weekend on uh, this was on Sun or this was, yes, yeah, Sunday. Uh, the balance beam individual uh, competition for the women did not go so well for the Americans, where everybody fell. Except for one, I believe the Italian Alice Darini De Denerico. I can't remember her name. Not a name that I'm I'm being asked to recall right away, except for right now, and I will never remember again. Uh, Simone Biles slipped off the balance beam, and Suni Lee also slipped off the balance beam, and everyone was wondering why everyone was falling, and there were very conservative performances on the balance beam. Well, what they're blaming, or what they're saying is, they weren't used to the quiet that during their performances during the team 
event and the all-around competitions, there was always music playing until it came down to the individual events in which the arena was incredibly silent. Interesting. And so there was no clapping, there was no cheering, there were no megaphones or vuvuzelas or just just beats playing in the background. And apparently it was so jarring to a lot of the athletes, there was they couldn't understand why. And some of the competitors actually asked the organizers of the gymnastics competition and the individual events to play any music that they could find. It's like someone left their iPod at home or couldn't couldn't uh, lost their iTunes password and said, oh, sorry, you've reached too many attempts, you've been locked out. And they were like, ah, whatever, we'll just go with silence. Apparently it was the silence that was joined because normally at events, crowds are much more just vibrant, unlike like golf, right? Apparently golf at the Olympics was full happy Gilmore. Yeah. But at the gymnastics, they were saying that they didn't want that library atmosphere. They were, they were talking amongst themselves, and they were saying their coaches could hear them talk while they were sitting next to their uh, apparatus because it was so quiet in the building, and it was because the fans just weren't kind of used to, like, should we talk? Should we murmur? Should we say something? And it was causing that kind of reaction. So it was just kind of chucking them off. They felt like they were at. They felt like they should have been at the golf match. Yeah, I suppose so. They were just like where they were saying where was the music? The the I believe the phrase was awkward and weird. <laughs> just straight awkward and weird. And by the way, there's a story that y'all need to be watching. And this is for more information as opposed to opinion, right? Team USA has a woman who is wrestling, and it'll be on Thursday. No, wait, she already, she wrestled, yeah, it'll be on Thursday. Her name is Amit Elor. She is from uh, San Jose, California. Parents immigrated from Israel. She's 20 years old. Apparently hasn't lost in an international match in four years. Hmm. Hasn't lost at all. It was so much that uh, there are, there, the, her competitors actually get called for stalling because they don't want to get pinned they they get called for apparently passive movement, something along those lines, to where they just don't want to wrestle her at that point anymore. They just they just kind of stand they back. They throw in the towel. Yeah, they don't they don't actually fight her. So she's an Olympic final. She will get a medal, but she's that dominant, and she wrestles in a weight class that wasn't available to her. She had to cut weight. Again, her name is Amit Elor. She's twenty years old. The Olympics only have six weights in international competition. Apparently, she had ten. So she had to cut eight pounds just to make the weight that she's wrestling at. And she never loses. But uh, her dad threw shot put in college. Her brothers played football or wrestled. And apparently it was so unfair that she was beating up the boys that the boys stopped wrestling her because they couldn't take her. Here's the bit. Walked into the Olympics, her score. This is, uh, think of the most dominant wrestler you can think of. Like, professional wrestler you know never loses, okay? Just picture that person. Now, roll it all up into a tight little ball and dump it into a meat elor. Who, in her last 37 matches, has won by an aggregate score. This is her total score. 322 to 16. If you know wrestling, and I was fortunate enough to be a wrestling sports information director back in the day, that is domination. At its highest level. The last time she met the world champion, she pinned her in 40 seconds. Amit Elor going for the gold on Thursday. All right, let's get you a medal count here. Listen to 99.9 The Fan for coverage of the Summer Games from France. Here is the current medal count presented by North Carolina FC, the United States of America, Team USA, with 79 total medals. They have 21 gold, 30 silver, and 28 in bronze. The People's Republic of China, second in medals with 53. They also have 21 gold medals. And the host country, France, with 13 gold medals and 48 total overall. All right, Summer Games updates on 99.9 The Fan throughout the day are brought to you by North Carolina FC. Listen for those reports, and you can also get your tickets today at NorthCarolinaFC.com. All right, coming up next, how many insiders are already giving up on Drake May as a professional? It's next up. On 99.9 The Fan.
Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 99.9 The Fan. The USA women's soccer national team is ready for their Olympic semifinal match against Germany this afternoon at noon. You can view the match live on USA or stream it on Peacock. USA men's basketball national team is ready for an Olympic quarterfinal bout with a hot shooting Brazil team this afternoon at 3.30 on NBC. And our local sports coverage continues at noon with the Adam Gold Show with Tim Donnelly filling in for Adam, followed by the drive with Tim Donnelly once again from 3 to 6. You can stream both shows on YouTube by searching 999 The Fan. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and never miss a play. And as always, find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com. Sports gets ramped up, so to speak. Yeah, we're getting closer to the start of college football season. Just uh, 18 days away for some teams, certainly a handful in the SEC. Or ACC, whoa, <laughs> careful. And uh, the NFL in just two days. Mix 101.5 is where you'll be able to listen to Carolina Panthers this season. Also simulcast when available on Buzz Sports 620 and 104.5 in Durham and 99.9 FM HD2 throughout the entire triangle. So uh, that's where you can find Carolina Panthers games this season. The fan will have lots of NFL primetime, and we are the home of the Super Bowl. So let's just get that out of the way right now. Uh, just some news and notes for you here. Not opinion, but more insight for you. J.J. Redick, as we all know, took the head coaching job. Uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers, they officially announced their coaching staff yesterday, so we do need to say congratulations to a friend of the station, Nate McMillan, Raleigh native, NC State uh, legend. He will be one of J.J.'s assistants in Los Angeles. Of course, he coached the Atlanta Hawks uh, for a couple seasons, was a coach for the Portland Trailblazers for a while, longtime NBA player. Also making the assistant coaching ranks is... Former Duke star and former G League coach of the year, Lindsey Harding. So lots of uh, connections to the triangle, connections to Duke as well for J.J. Redick as he gets himself underway in the NBA. Uh, notable, the Chicago White Sox lost tw their 21st game in a row. If you had bet against the White Sox for the last 21 uh, appearances <laughs> in a major league ballpark, you should be at least $2 richer today. I saw where they're tied with, like, I want to say, and forgive me if I'm getting the year wrong, the 1983 Phillies for the longest losing drought in MLB history. That's crazy. Phillies held it at 23 during that year, oh, whatever year it was. I just picked up a graphic. You're right. Uh, it was uh, They tied the Orioles with 21 losses. The Phillies at six, 1961. 1961. Sorry, so not 1983. 20, 23 for the Phillies. The Orioles, they tied in 1988. So they're just chasing the longest losing streak. I can't imagine. And there are very few, very few college football programs, unless you're a team making the jump from FCS to FBS, or you're just truly awful. And there still aren't that many awful college football teams or college basketball teams that put up offers. Can't imagine. And the, the MLB season is a long season. I mean, 162 games. That is a grind. Yeah. But to go an eighth of the season, this is an eighth of the season without seeing a single victory, without having whatever song that you play at the end of the game or whatever giveaway you do at the gate when people walk out. I'm like, there is there is so much lament about the Oakland A's and the fact it's their last season in Oakland and they're moving to Sacramento for a few years until they figure out the Las Vegas situation or wherever they headed. But the White Sox are just plain awful. That that's the long ride back on the red line in uh, in Southside Chicago. Twenty seven and eighty eight overall record right now for the White Sox. That is abysmal. I mean, just I'm not sure you can. I'm not sure there's really enough words to kind of go frustrated. Frustrated is not the right word you would want to be as a fan with the Chicago. But it's not like there's help coming up anywhere. It's not like you can go trade for an All Star team. You're just. It's just you need the you need the blue pill right for the offense, and it's just yeah. not happening. You need some sort of jolt in pitching, and it's just not happening. You need a Paul Skeens that Pittsburgh got that allowed them to take a big jump. There's nobody like that within the White Sox organization. It's very clear. I, w I was thinking of the Phillies losing the 1983 uh, or the 1983 loss in the World Series. That's where that was coming from. But yeah, I, <laughs> imagine. 
imagine just being a White Sox fan right now. I, I'm not sure that's a, I understand that's possible. And this 21 losses now, they lost 14 earlier in the season, a 14-game losing streak. So you've endured two of the longest streaks in Major League Baseball history when it comes to losses. And there's still another two months of the season to be played. Like, there's nothing you can do at this point. I mean, I, I, they might hit 100 losses before it's all said and done. Oh, they'll get 100. That's 100. No, no doubt about it. They're they're 27 and 88. All right, 12 losses in the in the course of the next two months does not. Mm, yeah, it, it just. You talk about it, we talk about expansion of Major League Baseball. Like, like it's this thing that gets thrown around around here, and I get it, and I love the idea that we want to bring a Major League Baseball team here, and we want to trumpet those headlines and whatnot. But you look at the teams that are struggling right now. And you're like, A's, Yeah, the White Sox, the Rockies aren't any better. The Rockies were an expansion team, too, and Major League Baseball hasn't expanded in nearly three decades. Yeah. But there's just no way. There's not enough talent. There just is enough talent. Who wants to go out and watch? And you can see it. Just... Go back and you can go look and do your research on this one too, but it's very plain, very plain as day. When the White Sox play on the south side, ain't nobody going to watch. Nobody wants to watch losses. And especially in baseball, which has tried to speed up a game, you cannot speed up a loss. It is just, you. it is an endurance run. It is an endurance run that you just don't want to complete. The beer doesn't taste any better. The peanuts don't get any fresher, and the hot dogs just seem limp coming off the grill. Nothing salvages that. Nothing can salvage that at all. All right, for some reason, pundits are giving up on Drake May already. That he is going into a situation in New England, unlike what you call the athletic Jaden Daniels who makes plays, and Caleb Williams whose freakish nature at quarterback are off the charts, the two quarterbacks that were chosen ahead of Drake May. But if you go to the reports coming out of Boston and you see the social pressure that comes out of it, and again, it doesn't paint a complete picture, but the thought is is that Drake May, former Carolina quarterback, is already being given an afterthought status. That it's one of those ideas that was great when we executed it and made him a top pick, but now all of a sudden we're all thinking about it and we're going, this wasn't the right way to go. And I'm not sure that the New England Patriots can afford to go to second guess their choice already in that there's this run back where Jacoby Brissett, who I've seen start in a number of locations in person in Indianapolis and in Miami against teams on the road, that this guy's never going to give up the job. And I'm like, why would you draft a quarterback that high and give up on him before he started? I don't see Drake May as the second coming of Trey Lance. No. This is where we're all ready to throw the baby out with the bathwater before anything has started, before the definition, before any words have been written. You're looking at a guy they call like this enigma, right? He'll throw bombs and it looks great. And then the next thing you see is like, ah, he just underthrew his receiver or zipped one past a guy. Do you think it takes time to build chemistry with guys you've never played with before? Absolutely. Now, when you look at it, Drake May has the size that you want as an NFL quarterback from his height, his arm strength, how you know he's just able to make things work when they're not there with his athletic ability. And it just sounds like right now he's being microanalyzed on everything from his early work, from his early footwork to every pa- every pass in the mini camps and now his training camp performances. I mean, it just it just takes time. He just got there. I'm already looking. <laughs> I go, it's already going to be a tough grind because he's playing in Boston and we know the Boston fans and this is, you know, Philadelphia fans and I think just general fans in general, but we know that there's a stereotype that comes with that. They're just hard on quarterbacks and they were treated to Tom Brady. Yeah. They were treated to Tom Brady. So everyone's got to fill some of those shoes. But to, and again, the praise comes from Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams has not been under that kind of scrutiny in Chicago. Like he showed up on the sidelines of the Houston Chicago game. Yep, we're good. All right, wave at the fans. That's it. No one's calling that out. And everyone's going to give Jaden Daniels a pass in Washington because it's the Washington Commanders. And they've been going through the same things that the New England Patriots went through since Tom Brady left. But the New England Patriots, I believe, have one of the toughest schedules in all the NFL this season, right? They're going to have to run a little bit of a gauntlet. There's no doubt about it. And then you look at J.J. McCarthy in Minnesota, and I don't want to distract too much from what's going on, 
But J.J. McCarthy's supporting cast is off the charts. Yeah. I'm like, T.J. Hawkinson at healthy at healthy status. I got Justin Jefferson to throw the ball to, who catches everything, one-handed, two-handed, no-handed. J.J. McCarthy's been set up for success just with the franchise he's been he's been put in. Well, you hope that the rumors of the Brandon Ayuk deal to New England could actually happen. So maybe that it takes some of the heat off of Drake May, whether or not he's good enough, before he's taken an actual snap. Now, if he comes out and grounds eight balls in the opener against the Carolina Panthers, yeah, then maybe we have something to talk about. But I'm like, man, giving up on him before he's even taken a snap, having regrets about drafting him number three because of one pass in a non-contact drill? Stop it. Stop it. You're going to go. You're going to go down that same path that Bryce Young went, that you're going to go down with Bryce Young. You don't want to do that. Just too early. It's just way too early. Overanalyzing. Just paralysis by analysis. It's what we're dealing with.